Hey, hey, everyone, and welcome to today's podcast. Well, today we have the last in the authority series. And let me be honest, we're going to go out with a bit of a bang. Um, We're going to be talking all about being a mental projector. Um, And the incredible human I have joining me today is one of my mastermind crew. And I am so grateful to share some of her magic with you on this podcast today. So welcome, Miel Gerard. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I um, love being a student of yours and everything that you do. And yeah, I really feel like you're making the world a better place. So I'm very honored to be here and yeah, just a big fan. So thanks. Wow. Thank you. That's very (laughs) kind. Um, All right. So today we're going to talk about being a, a mental projector. Now, what does that mean? Let's just start with the configuration. Basically, if you're a mental projector, it means that you have no de- definition below the throat, okay? So some mental pro- projectors might just have the head and ajna. Um, others might have the ajna and the throat. Some might have, have the head, the ajna, and the throat all defined. But basically what it means is there's nothing going on in the centers from a definition point of view below the neck. Meaning you're going to have some what we call hanging gates, so activated gates that are red or black, but the centers themselves are white, meaning that your authority is this this sounding board um, or, you know, talking it out. There's a number of different um, names that we give this authority, but ultimately what it means is that the decisions are being made through the physical body and talking it out. A mental projector is someone who, because they don't have consistent and reliable access to any of their centers below the throat, there's no consistent and reliable body feedback that's coming back in the same way about every decision. So instead of having to really rely on something consistent and reliable within the body, what actually happens is that the mental projector becomes um, really aware of their, and it is their superpower, this, this ability to read the potential of energy. And then as they are feeling their way through either the energy of a person or an environment, what's going to happen is they're going to need, or they're going to feel the need to talk it out. Now, <clears throat> Talking it out isn't about asking for advice. Um, You hear me say this a lot. When we, any type wants advice, they will be very direct and they will ask about, you know, exactly the advice that they want. However, now that we're talking about mental projectors, it's a process of being able to talk it out so that they can hear how this, this person or how this place makes them feel. Does that resonate with you, Miel? A hundred percent. And I'd say the real, the first time I started feeling this connection was actually through journaling, um, where I would be writing things out and then would have that pause of like, oh, that's how I actually feel about the situation. And, and now as I become more familiar and, you know, finding my place in the world and finding my trusted people, it's definitely become very clear to me that also, and this is something that I learned from you is just selecting my audience is very crucial to my ability to speak freely. And again, to come to those proper truths for myself. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And I think that this is such a crucial point that when you have this authority, it's so important or, or any of the authorities where you need a process of talking it out, the people you choose to talk it out with are paramount. Um, Miel, do you have ex- experiences maybe in the past where you didn't know how important this person was and perhaps you just you know, went through this pro- process probably quite unconsciously of deciding what's right for you through speaking it out and maybe you spoke it out with people who weren't very supportive do you have do you have experience of that and maybe they're projecting all their crap on you and and it really you know it makes it hard for you to make a decision tell us a bit about that oh so much experience my goodness I mean really I'd say it was earlier this year that I had this very clear understanding of how different it feels to have a big life conversation about a decision that I'm making with someone who isn't projecting their stuff onto me, 
versus I feel like honestly kind of my whole life and mainly in these last few years as I'm continuously trying to find my way in the world of just having so many people put their stuff on me when I just talk, you know, and I'm again, not asking them necessarily for their opinions or this or that, but I think there is an interesting component of also just like the three, five, which is my profile and don't want to get too much into that, but there is, I do feel that it is really easy for other people to put their stuff on me. And in the past, I really wasn't aware of how much I was absorbing versus, uh, yeah, just having that better understanding of what is mine and what is theirs. And it's been really fascinating and incredibly empowering, honestly, to recognize that not everyone is for me and I can still love these people in my life, but just to have better boundaries in terms of who I really open up to um, in regards to the things that I'm deeply thinking about and contemplating. And it's just it's been really fascinating. And just earlier this year, I had a very clear kind of dichotomizing experience of speaking with two old friends. One, I always felt so shitty after the end of the conversation and just, it made me doubt myself and question and just always that continuous feeling of like, gosh, what's wrong with me? And why can't I function in this world the way I'm expected to? And then I had, and then this other old friend kind of came back into my life. And at the end of the conversation, I would feel alive and excited and just feel so capable. And yeah, I was just so grateful for that. And um, yeah, I just can, yeah, continue to honor those, those experiences and see them for what they are. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I love that. I think that's so important. Having that, <clears throat> that really clear example of when you bear your soul, because this really is the process of making decisions for a mental projector. Like a, a, you, you really have to bear your soul. You have to be honest. You have to be truthful because you don't actually know how you feel about it until these words come out of your mouth or into your journal, which I think is a really, really important point for people that it doesn't actually have to be another person. As long as you can hear yourself, as long as you can <clears throat> see those, the wisdom coming through, doing that through the, the process of a journal is also really, really powerful. But I love what you said about having these, you know, these, this dichotomy of the, the friend that you walk away feeling shitty. <clears throat> and even in the language that you use, I could hear that, <clears throat> Within that conversation, you're not actually speaking your truth because you're so busy trying to be someone that you think you should be. And then in this other conversation, this person's actually holding space for you to come to those clear um, and true decisions for yourself. So really paying attention to those external clues and those internal clues, like knowing how a specific person makes you feel when you're going through this decision-making process. I love that. Um, and the other thing I want to add is that even though for those listeners out there, even though Miel is a three, five, she is going to get more projections, um, because of that five, but a mental projector or anyone with not a lot of definition, you are still a walking mirror. So it's almost like for in Miel's case, it's like a double whammy or, um, Tiana, my reflector from the last, uh, mastermind you know, she was a, 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 um, a five, two. So literally reflector, double projection field. So really understanding that wherever we have this openness or these undefined centers, we are a mirror. We are reflecting back to others. So having a mental um, authority really does mean that you need the space. You just need the space to be able to um, come to those decisions through the the process of talking it out, writing it out, um, and allowing those things to drop in, as opposed to trying to force yourself or force, um, you know, yeah, others to, you know, really know yourself. It's a, it's a it's a process of of 
allowing, not a process of forcing. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And it's also, I think, something that we have spoken about in previous conversations, the idea of doing the body scans on a continual basis. And this is actually something that I realized I would do in my set meditation times, but I wasn't doing it just kind of, you know, just repeatedly throughout the day. And even more so now that I have that habit back in check, it's so crazy how even in conversations, like I absorb where the person might not even be present, but it was, you know, we're having conversations about life and all to all the things all together and just realizing how I will pick up the feelings of this theme that we are talking about and recognizing that, oh, okay, this isn't mine and really learning to like let that go because it my whole life really has always been very much this internal process of oh okay well why why am I feeling this pit in my stomach now what does this mean about me what what do I need to work through and what is coming through and just really being able to take a step back and just letting it go it's yeah been really powerful yeah I love that and you bring up some of the most important points I reckon like being any anyone with a lot of um undefined centers below especially below the throat but any undefined centers I mean I have a undefined head and ajna and I have to be aware of this is that this is also a process of really working out what is yours and what isn't yours you know as you go through this decision making process often um, I have a, a very good friend of mine who's also a mental projector. And one of the things that I noticed that she does, and it, she's completely unconscious to it. Like she, she knows she's a mental projector, but she's not really into human design. Um, but what I notice about her, and I would say that she's very aligned, you know, very naturally aligned to her design. And what she does is she literally has these, all these, she's a lot of friends, a lot of really close, deeply connected friends. And she will just literally just move from one to the next to the next. And she will just share whatever she's going through. And she gets all these different, um, you know, whether it's just the way we hold space differently or the way we give feedback differently or whatever it is. And I see this beautiful journey for her where she never makes a decision until she's probably spoken to four or five people. Um, And again, it's not about our opinions it's very much about just being able to have the conversation and within that conversation she can really go okay cool I know what's correct for me now Um, but I want to get back to this the body scan and knowing what's correct for you Um, I think I've probably shared this story on one of the last podcasts but I'm going to share it again because I love it it's so simple now um, Swanee from another my last mastermind, who's also a mental projector. When she first was learning all of her um, mental projector wisdom and and beauty uh, throughout the mastermind, she was playing tennis with a group of friends one day and um, she did, she made a line call and she called a, a ball out and her, the, one of her friends on the other team, he didn't like that at all. And she was fine about it. She's really cool. Like she's one of, she's very, a self-assured being and as long as she was on her side of the the net and he was on his so their auras were nowhere near each other she was cool and then as soon as they swapped sides um and they walked past each other she said it was like it hit me like a wave like all of a sudden I felt like oh my god I've made the wrong decision um you know this 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 energy kind of hit her and it was in that moment that that she said hang on a second I just body scanned over there and I'm fine. And as soon as I pass this person, all of a sudden I'm not fine. And she was like, it was so cool to be able to be conscious that once I got back to my, you know, baseline and he got back to his, I could body scan and go, oh, wow, that is really not my energy. So this process, especially in decision-making is so incredibly important that you have the opportunity to do those scans, to do those body scans. And even if you're going through the process and you're talking to your most trusted sounding board, um, 
still being able to step away and go, okay, so now what feels true for me? Does that resonate with you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say that even within my trusted group of people that, you know, they're all just individuals living their lives. So even if they're not necessarily projecting something onto me, the questions that they ask or their reflections that they add into the conversation are always going to be different. And in that, I also, I do appreciate the ability to have various sounding boards to help me think about the thing differently. And um, yeah, I would say then within that, there is definitely uh, just the human component of even my most trusted people that are not going to generally project their stuff onto me, you know, it happens every so often. And, and so being aware of the complexity of the idea of talking to another human and with my mental projectorness, uh, it definitely is helpful to, as you said, exactly just can, you know, always then check for myself. Is this really true for me? And, and I'd say that that is sometimes easier than other times. And then there are those moments where it's even then on a different level of just, you know, being in contact with someone and feeling their energies and taking them on. And again, it's some things are easier to let go of and other things because they probably do resonate and have a you know, I carry a part of that inside of me, uh, that there is this idea of it takes, yeah, just longer for me to kind of make that separation happen. And it definitely always gets easier and better every single time I do it. So it is just that continuous practice of just getting better at it. And yeah, I love it. I love it. One of the things that I think is fascinating um, about about you specifically, and and I, one of the reasons why I really wanted to have this discussion with you on the podcast, because we've seen this this I'm going to say like the art of a mental projector just play out almost every session we've had uh, of the mastermind, and this is one of the things that I think for all the mental projectors listening, you know, so many projectors full stop but mental projectors especially they're they're wandering around trying to you know who am I why am I here what am I doing they're 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 not fully seeing their their beauty their value their worth they're not seeing these things because they're still categorizing them under the actions that I take the output that I create and one of the things that we see so beautifully expressed with you is that it's almost like week after week, you might even just bring a reflection. You know, it's not, it's nothing to do with the outside world. And I think the reason why I want to share this, and it's not just mental projectors, so it's not just about this authority, but I really want to share the beauty of, of a projector when they are in alignment. And that is that you are literally just living your life. So on the on the mastermind, you might share a reflection or you might share a challenge or you might just share a comment or something that you've seen um, uh, throughout the process. And all of a sudden it's like this domino effect. It's like this, everyone in the room goes, oh my God, when Miel said that, I dot, dot, dot. And they went down this process or they went through this their, their own personal process from this very simple piece. Now, this is what I really want all the projectors out there to hear. And and especially the mental projectors, because it's like you have this ability to just drop a seed and it's this seed of thought or an opinion or something. And all of a sudden it's this, this snowball effect. Were you aware that you had this gift that this was happening before that? I mean, you probably were, but please tell me. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one that I've, had glimpses of in my life. And I would say it really came about when I went, when I did my undergrad, I started political science because I wanted to make the world a better place, realized I'm not a liar. So that was not going to happen. Tried other variations of it. And I was just like, oh, it just gets worse and worse, the less accountability there is. Um, and then I ended up in the philosophy department 
And that was the first time I was being recognized for my thoughts. And it was such a differing experience than I'd ever had before. And I'll say that I always, I got away with a lot, but I always had good grades. I always did well in school, but it was really this idea for to be seen for my ideas was really a big deal for me. And I then other life things happened and uh, yeah, kind of skewed away from those kinds of opportunities. And, and since then I've had various, uh, yeah, I guess scenarios in my life where I was allowed to share my opinions and like what I was working in an elementary school and working on basically like mindfulness and social emotional learning with the, with these 10 year olds, fifth graders. And it was so amazing how much they resonated with the things that I was sharing with them. And they were so excited. And I mean, I also called it like Jedi mind training. So of course they were all into that. Um, but it was so, it, it really helped me blossom in a way that I don't and I haven't really experienced in other places in just being out in the world with the general expectations of a human to perform in a certain way. Um, and, and then I'd say most recently, earlier this year, I was in this writing workshop, like a creative nonfiction workshop. And again, it was writing came back and that was a there was this feeling of every week I'd share and everyone else in the group would just, you know, not to toot my own horn, but everyone would always be floored by the ideas, sentiments, uh, reflections that I shared in my writings. And it is a, yeah, it's been a really productive feeling and experience for myself because again, I, you know, there has always been this theme of, gosh, I feel like I really don't fit into this world and the expectations of me. So having those experiences where um, I can really share my innermost self has been so rewarding. And yeah, I would wish that for every mental projector and also just every human, because we all want to be heard and seen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been really grateful for those kinds of experiences and also just in class with you guys. Yeah. To be able I love to, it. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's so incredibly powerful. And this is the, the piece that I really want all those mental projectors to hear out there that, you know, to blow up that old paradigm of, you know, you have to be doing and achieving to be really valuable. I think what's cool is that um when you I know from my experience when you've been in class so I can only imagine in the writing class or in the, the classroom with their 10 year olds it was the same is that you know you see you in those moments do you know what I mean like and and you're not and sometimes you're seeing you because you're vulnerable and you want an answer and you're feeling really uncomfortable and you want to heal something but you bring all of you and it's those moments that you're fully seeing, recognizing and acknowledge, just acknowledging your needs, you know, like you need a resolution to this or you need to understand this. Um, and I believe that these are the moments that why that mental projectors shine so brightly um, in these areas, because you know, in your writing class, you just go in there, you're sharing your vulnerability, but it's this, it is this gift of the mind. And, you know, as an authority, it can be challenging to have this configuration because there isn't anything consistent per se, but I, I want to talk about that in a second. But um, whereas when you come into these environments and you start to unconsciously and unknowingly and even unintentionally give this gift of your ideas, this is when I really see you and I've seen many mental projectors shine really brightly. And I love the moment of, you know, I can often see you just in the background, like, wow, when you hear the next person, well, actually when Miel said da, 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 and like that, those moments when it really just hits home for you that far out, you know, I do matter what I say matters. And um, do you ever have that awareness that, 
wow, I actually don't have to try so hard. I just need to turn up. I just need to be me and be honest because when you're that, when you're that vulnerable, true self, like people just receive it, they pick it up. A hundred percent. And I'd say that your advice to me earlier this week, I was having some boundary issues with work and the way you encouraged me to just put it out there and just take that risk and be honest about what I need really reminded me of, I guess, the first time I learned about boundaries about 10 years ago and how I would really trip up on myself before taking the action of speaking them out. And I, I used to write myself a script out and I would practice it. And yeah, I remember in the beginning, I was definitely met with resistance, but I stayed true to myself and just honored my truth and my needs. And it was just this, and eventually, and this was my experience earlier this week, when I finally did speak up for myself, it's so fascinating how time and time again, everyone ends up thanking me for setting the boundaries. It's literally, which, you know, then in that vein, it would be like, oh, well, why don't I do this all the time? And then it's the conditioning and just that, you know, gotta, gotta keep doing it and re continuously rewrite those patterns. But that's been, yeah, just super again, empowering to remember that, oh yes, I can do this. And ultimately in a weird way, everyone benefits from it. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Yeah, absolutely. I think, again, this is the projector thing. Being a projector is, I mean, everything's counterintuitive, but being a projector is so counterintuitive, you know, like when you start to step in and trust the subtleties and trust your, your, um, your stuff almost that you trust your process you're so right it's like this is the these are these new leaders that we're creating and they're leading from the middle of the pack um, and changing from a completely different paradigm than we're used to of this patriarchal, um, you know, ego-driven masculine leader. Uh, but that's a whole nother conversation. So mm -hmm. two things I want to talk about. Um, number one, I want to talk about um, because you have the, the definition in the, um, the head and the ajna and the, the throat, but it can be any configuration for anyone listening. I was actually going to say I don't have the head, so I just. Oh, that's have right. The, Sorry. I just have the, no, no, you're fine. So just good correction. Ashna throat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Do so. One of the things that I've noticed, and I see this in my my son, um, because he has the, that configuration, is that having a mind that's always on, you know, like it is literally that computer that's constantly running, it's constantly processing. Can you tell me what that experience is like? What's it like to, I mean, I have a very, very busy mind and it's been a lot busier in the past, especially when I was doing depression and panic disorder, but um, knowing that you have this consistent energy in your mind all the time, you know, I'm always saying to uh, clients that have this configuration, like meditate, but meditate with a mantra because your mind needs, the puppy dog needs a freaking bone. You know, like it needs something to do. It's not the sort of mind that's just going to be peacefully sitting in its gentle little nest, you know, um, cross-legged and, and quiet. It's a mind that will need something. So do you want to talk a little bit about the experience of having that defined Ajna, that constant tick, tick, ticking of the computer? How does that feel for you? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'll speak to two components of the question of just in a daily uh, experience and then also in my meditation practice. Um, but just in general, I do have this insatiable desire to learn and absorb information. And I am Yes, always thinking a lot and contemplating. And I think in that typical projector style, it is very broad and philosophical and, you know, always thinking about the big questions in life, so to say. Of course, yes, then the little human 3D uh, necessities come in. And uh, yeah, depression was also a big thing and has been a big part of my life. Um, first being diagnosed when I was a teenager. 
and uh yeah just kind of the ongoing dance of that and it's but within that there is definitely this sense of I suppose a a confidence and a trust in my mind and and it's quite interesting uh my sister is also a projector and uh but with many more defined centers um so we operate we operate very differently there are a lot of crossovers and there's definitely a yin and yang component to us it's a very uh interesting relationship but <laughs> within that there is this sense of you know in in terms of sibling dynamics and she's older she i would say from my perspective tends to see herself as a superior intellectually like love her it's all great but there is this sense of we've just had various conversations over the years about things that i've studied and it's always interesting to me how, and this is again, a personality thing, but you know, I feel like she definitely is attached to the notion of being right at times. And I think it really is because I have this defined Ashna that I have this faith in my knowing that I am really okay with people that you know want to be right and there are a lot of people out there in the world that want to be right oh yeah and um there is definitely just this kind of surrender that i have that also you know i think we are all so similar and all just wanting to feel the same things and want the same things it just manifests and we want them in different ways so there's always a little bit of that, you know, stepping back and just recognizing of just, yeah, we're all human, just having a human existence. And, and I think my mind has been uh, a strong support for me in that way. And um, it, it definitely, I can feel like I'm on the hamster wheel in terms of how do I, again, fit into this world um so there's definitely that learning act that I and that path that I am still on of how to just be me and you've helped me so much in that in my experience and just reinforcing and also just having that mirrored back to me um has been really powerful and and then on the other side of that I'd say I've been meditating for gosh quite a few years now and I've done various iterations of meditations and different kinds of meditations. Um, but really, I think that the what has been the most consistent has been I learned transcendental meditation about three or four, gosh, I think four years ago. And it's a mantra meditation. And that has been incredibly powerful. And on a side note, within that, they, you know, in all meditation forms, most teachers will say, whatever happens, happens, let it be, don't force the thoughts, right? Um, but within that, <laughs> so transcendental meditation is a, supposed to be a twice a day meditation, morning when you wake up and then in the afternoon and or before you go to sleep. But within that, my afternoon meditation, I, to this day, no matter how much I sleep, I 98% of the time will really zonk out and just, you know, have a full rest in my meditation. And in the beginning, there was a little bit of this, like, okay, they say to be okay with it and trust your body. But again, this kind of questioning of like, what, what's wrong with me? Like, why am I, like, I get enough sleep. I wake up rested. Why is this happening? And as soon as I learned about this notion that naps are really good for projectors, I was just like, yes, okay. I can really let that doubting of myself and that questioning of myself, I can really let that go because and this is what I love about human design is that I just feel so validated in my experience. And 
that it is just one less thing that I need to question and one more thing that I can just really embrace and confidently uh, allow it to support me to be my best self. I love that. I love that. I love that. And it's so funny. I have literally been um, recommending transcendental meditation to um, anyone with a defined um, ajna or head um, and or head for the longest time. And it's so beautiful to hear it in real life that yes, it is absolutely the thing. And I, and I think it's just, this is the beauty of it. I love what you said about um, ultimately learning to let go of all of the, of the criticisms. I mean, we all criticize ourselves. And I was thinking about this. I've got an, I've got a podcast interview tomorrow and I was really thinking about like what is the power of human design and I think one of the the great gifts of human design and there are many but one of the great gifts is that we start to let go of these self-criticisms that we've had of ourselves for so long especially because we we discover in many cases that we're actually trying to change or fix our superpower um, and once we have that that faith, like all that, that proof that, oh my God, actually that's my superpower. I've just been looking at it the wrong way the whole time. It is just so incredibly freeing. I love it. Yeah. And, and I'll add on that note, it's, I have as a child and I still continuously have very vivid dreams. And I remember my mother actually took me to a healer once uh, to sort of help me through it. Cause I just wasn't sleeping very well as a, as a child. And he essentially was the first person, first of many people to, and yes, we all need to protect ourselves and close ourselves off. And I definitely believe in that, but, um, it was this idea that I feel like you really helped me reframe, but there, I've just, I feel like there is generally this notion of protecting yourself from other people's energy and kind of zipping yourself up so that, you know, you can keep that boundary. And again, yes, there is a time and place for that. Absolutely. However, you have mentioned on various occasions, just this idea that my open centers are my my superpower. And I love that because since embracing that, it has really flipped the script for me in terms of how, and when I have the body scan and I check something that's not necessarily mine, it still allows me to recognize again, just that, wow, I'm really powerful. Like I can feel stuff that people don't want to talk about. People aren't saying, uh, just, and really the truth I feel and I connect with and just this idea of not being scared of how open I am has been definitely transformational and yeah, I'm just so grateful for that. So yeah, I just, yeah. Just had I to love say it. Thanks. Um, so I'm, thank you for saying, um, you know, for me, I believe this is one of the the real challenges with human design and, and where people have gone wrong. Um, and they, because we, we chose, we chose to be designed this way. We came in, we chose to be designed this way as if we would choose to be designed in a way that we have to constantly protect ourselves. It doesn't make sense. You know, it's really interesting because um, Swanee, my other mental projector from the mastermind, um, she said exactly the same thing. She was like, oh my God, game changer. I don't have to protect myself from everyone. And like, mm -mm, you just have to learn that it's not yours and you can let it flow through you because it's in that gift, like your gift as a projector and as a mental projector, because of your configuration, it's heightened is to see the potential of energy. And if you are closed down and you're not allowing yourself access to that energy or you're afraid of it or you're creating stories that are stopping you being able to read it, then you don't get your, your superpower. You don't get the ability to fully tap into this ability that you guys have to really feel the potential of energy. And at the end of the day, we all have a choice of whether we identify with other people's energy, hold on to it. Um, create stories that make it disempowering or we just get to choose to be like you know swanny on the tennis court like yep that's not mine and just keep cruising and I, I think this is where um, 
all of us, any, any like anyone with an undefined centre, we need to stop defending it. And for all those people, 50% of the population who have an undefined solar plexus, stop defending your bloody solar plexus and just, you know, what is true for you? What is yours and what isn't? Because if it's not yours, you can just let it flow through you. Even if it's uncomfortable, just let it flow through you. Um, yeah, I love that. Thanks for saying that. Um, now well, I want to- Thank you for sharing. Oh, so welcome, far out. That's what I'm on the planet to do, right? Totally on the planet to empower others to be their own guru. You know, this is the thing for me. Um, so the I want to talk about how it feels. Like a large part of your authority is how people and places make you feel so over your journey have you become more consciously aware of okay I need to just allow myself to be here and see what comes up feeling and energy wise um or you know have there been times in the, in the past where perhaps you know and you've mentioned it before that you're like wow I need to change myself to fit into this energy as opposed to taking that as feedback as in, oh, this is not my people, these are not my places. How is your relationship with that knowing now that the read you get from people and places is part of your decision-making process? Yeah, I love this. And I think you've really also helped me become more clear in my understanding of this, but it's, I'd say, so initially there's the environment component and I've lived in lots of different places in the world. And in each location, I feel like I, I've picked up some nugget of truth in what works for me and what doesn't work for me. And a, an example of that was I was living in New York. I lived in Paris for a year and then I moved back to New York. And when I was in Paris, there was just there are a lot of more green spaces. It's of course a much smaller city. So you can see the sky more clearly, but there was really this feeling of also just being outside all year round, even if there's quote unquote weather. And when I was living in New York at the time, there just really wasn't that much. It's changed in the last few years, but I, so when I went back to, to New York, I made this point of every day I was in college and every day on my way to class, I would stop and I would just put my hands up to a tree and just touch the tree and just connect because I realized that that was really important for me. And again, having, I grew up in Southern California, so I was always outside, but I never necessarily considered myself like an outdoorsy person. Didn't grow up camping. I now love camping, um, all these things that again, learning as I go, um, but yeah, it's really just building a stronger connection to nature where I really can just let go and be my happiest self without any conditions has been so helpful because it's really, it's really easy for me to, again, being totally open when I'm around other people, especially in places like Los Angeles that I just pick up on all the superficial materialistic desires and wants and, oh, I see that. Oh, I want that. Oh, I want that. And as soon as I step out of it, I'm just like, oh, I really, I really don't care. I mean, yes, I don't like nice things, but that's really not what I am striving to achieve and accomplish and have. And, and so in that respect, there's definitely been a gradual leaning towards a, yeah, more removed life. And in that sense, I do also, um, yeah, I was going to say, I was going to mention my sidereal chart. I have the six, two. So the hermit thing, I feel like definitely resonates with me, um, going into that, but, uh, then going back to environment in terms of the people that I surround myself, it's been so fascinating this past year. I feel like it's really been shown to me in a very obvious way of who my people are and who my people aren't. And when I'm around my people that are not mine, it like, I can have a great time with them. I can really enjoy them again with the open G center. I totally have that chameleon chameleon vibe. I and being able to connect on the soul level, I can really, uh, you know, get into it with any kind of person. And that's been a 
actually, I feel like a blessing of mine and, um, and a gift that I have from a young age, uh, really embraced. Um, so that's always been nice, but again, going back to these kind of different groups that I've surrounded myself with, it's, it's really interesting how, yes, I can have a lot of fun and enjoy my time, but ultimately it's like, I'm in these groups by association. So it's like, I know that they're not my people and how I, how that is so obvious to me is that I, one, don't speak as freely as I do when I'm with my people and I don't get excited and I don't share all the things that I've learned that day or that week or that I've been thinking about versus when I'm with my people, I'm just boom, 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 sharing the dots. They're asking me questions. Uh, I'm telling stories and this and that. And I'm just, I'm very alive. And when I am then in these other circumstances where again, lovely people, just not my my crew. Um, it's just really interesting to see how the conditioning really comes through of just questioning my worth and my value. And it, yeah, it's hard because I am not for everyone and I want to be open-minded and I want to have all sorts of people in my life. And I do. Um, but within my people, Yeah. So it's like within my people, there are lots of different kinds, quote unquote, of people. Um, So, yeah. So I like to be open and yeah, people look all sorts of different kinds and act and are different, but with my people. And I think this then just goes back to the being really authentic component And when I'm around my people, it's just no questions asked. It's just, I am just free to be me. I love it. Oh my God, I love it. And this is the piece. And I think it's not just mental projectors that need to be paying more and more attention to these things, you know? Like, yes, it's super important to you guys because it's part of your decision-making process. However, you know, we all notice that. We all notice that there's groups that we are fully ourselves with and then groups that we're not. I mean, I know for me, for sure, that is my experience. Um, And yeah, I love that. And the more, the thing that I love is that awareness is 95% of the journey. So when we come to human design and let's say, you know, for those listening, um, either you're working with a, a, a mental projector, you are in a relationship with a mental projector, maybe you're raising a mental projector, like just really being able to empower them that the people that they surround themselves with really matter. I mean, they all matter for all of us. I mean, you've, you know, you would have heard that quote, we are the average of the five people we hang out with. Um, But it's so important for you guys to know that you are with the people and in the environments that make you feel good because this is part of your decision-making process. I love that. So tell me, what advice would you give to someone out there who's in a relationship with a mental projector? What do you think they need to know? Oh, I love this. I would say ask open-ended questions and allow them to really speak it out and give them time to, yeah, I guess kind of do a little dance around the idea before necessarily jumping in and before coming to any conclusions on your own part around it. And within that, and I think the only way to really be able to be on the receiving end of that is, um, as in for like the non-mental projector person is to have an embodied presence within yourself. Um, and again, I think that's really then the, the way in which we cannot project our stuff onto each other because we all do it, um, or we all have the ability to do it, but again, similar to the 95% awareness component, I think just having that grounded sense of self to just hear them out, I think is really, um, yeah, I love that that. you can offer them. 
I think this is such beautiful advice. It's such freaking great advice. I mean, again, it's good advice for everyone. However, being in a relationship with a projector or even a reflector or a manifester, this is golden advice um, to really have a grounded sense. In fact, all of the, even the generator types to have this grounded sense of yourself first, um, because you cannot you cannot do anything different but um, amplify and reflect the person you're in a relationship with, um, and we're all the same. But that is the same. You know, my husband Justin, he literally has two defined centers. He's a splenic projector. Um, and, you know, for many years, I watched him try to resist, resist even the good stuff that I'd be putting down, you know, like he was very resistant for a period of time. But interestingly, the better I got, the healthier I got, whether it was mentally or emotionally or whatever it was throughout my journey, he was, he was like on the journey. He, he didn't even consciously start his own personal development journey until, you know, I don't even a few years ago, you know, maybe a little bit longer than that, but, and it's, it, and it just, you speaking makes me so aware of, because so much of his journey, he didn't really have to do. He just had to make the choice. Am I in this relationship with this woman or not? Because constantly as I was upgrading, he was in that aura. He was in that space. He was experiencing it. And he just had a choice to either be on, on the Emma train, on the, on the Emma train or not. So I think that is really important because the other side of the, the coin is that if you are in a relationship with a mental projector um, and you are not taking responsibility for your own shit, then they have to swim around in that. And that's, that's not, that's not correct. That's not right. Um, so taking full responsibility of the energy that we bring to a relationship. I love that. Um, and that other piece, like open-ended questions, you know, one of the things for me being in a relationship with a projector, as I say, he's a splenic projector. Um, on a good day, what I'm really good at is just letting him talk, you know. Um, on a day where I'm busy or, um, you know, more focused on myself, I will literally be like, oh, I don't need all the words. Stop talking. And then the moment that comes out of my mouth, I'm like, oh, sorry. Continue to talk. Speak. Know your truth. Um, oh, so be, being really aware of, of that process that you need to speak it out. Um, and being in a relationship with with someone, knowing that they ha that it, it really serves this person to be able to hold space for them just to, to speak it out, to talk all the details um, is really important. Yeah. Love that. So the last thing I want to ask you is from the perspective of when you were a kid, what do you think parents, what advice would you give to parents who are now trying to parent or not trying, who are now parenting mental projectors? What do you think would be helpful for them to understand about being a child and a mental projector? Oh, I would say trust that they know a lot more than you might be comfortable sharing with them and you can empower them by sharing and explaining again with healthy boundaries and not you know I'd say please you know as much as it's possible don't try to put your stuff onto them um, which I think is what many parents and my parents were afraid to do. And so they kept me in the dark and they would tell me everything was fine when it really wasn't. And that was a real challenge because when you feel something and you're hearing opposing words, it um, just doesn't necessarily set you up for success. <laughs> so in the positive, please you know, in, in the most uh, grounded way possible, share what you can about your human experience in a way that they are aware that it is not their issue and it is not their fault and their problem. And that, yeah, just, you know, that you love them and want them to be their best selves. And yeah, it's not their responsibility. I love that. Oh my goodness. And as a parent myself, and I mean, I've got two MG children, so not raising projectors. 
but I'm really aware of what you just said. You know, I think as parents that we do not talk enough about truth. You know, we're so, and this is changing now, but de- definitely of my generation, like my mom shared nothing with me. Like I had to work it out on my own. Um, and I think that what you said is so profound because they're feeling it. The kids are feeling it. And if you have a mental projector, like they are really feeling what's going on. Like you're not keeping anything from them. So for me, I think it's so much more important. And for all the people that I've worked with, being a parent myself, all the years of study is that I think that the the value comes in being responsible for ourselves as parents, like being responsible that I am feeling this way. It is about me. You know, like even my kids will often say, oh, you're just projecting your stuff on me. You know, like they, ha- they understand Amazing. it's a hard boundary. Like, no, that's not me. And it's hilarious when you hear the two brothers like saying, no, no, you're just projecting your shit on me. Um, it's it. hilarious. Right. But it, it yes. is this, 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 it's so important that as parents that we stop thinking that kids know less than us, that, that they are in some way inferior because they're not at all so we need to be modeling that ability to be honest responsible boundaries and not putting our stuff on them being very very clear that you know like mom and dad are going through a challenging time right now it's not anything you've done it's because of this or that or um whatever it is it's so important that we take full responsibility and we don't we don't overshare but we certainly don't undershare with our children so i love that thank you Yeah. I mean, I'm also so grateful to the times that we're having all of these conversations because gosh, what a, what a better world it is for it. And, and, you know, got a lot of work to do. Um, but yeah, I'm so grateful that these topics are coming out because it's certainly made my life a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So, so true. And look, I think that is the thing, right? Like you say, where, where it can get better but we're in this place where it's much better that we're shaking it up, that we're creating this change, that we're starting to talk about these things because this is the opportunity for us to reset those boundaries and become different human beings from it. So I'm a strong believer that we are heading in the right direction. It's just that it's bloody messy right now. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is what it is. But anyway, thank you so much, Miel. It has been amazing talking, being a mental projector with you. And I'm so grateful that you're in my life, that I've got to got to get to know you. And thank you so much for joining me today on the podcast. Thank you. And you too. And I actually was hoping to be able to ask you one question. Yeah, please. I know that you've done it before on the podcast, but it's been coming up for me recently. And um, could you explain your process for the body scan? Because I have mine, which I've just integrated so many various modalities and things that I've learned over the years. And uh, yeah, I'd love your quick version of just how to walk walk through it for someone that's new to this process. Okay, I love it. Such a freaking great question. Okay, so number one, especially if you are a mental projector or anyone who has mental definition, one of the big keys is that you have to get back into your body. Same for everybody, but this is something that can be a little bit more challenging for either those that are highly identified with the mind. Like for me, I was very identified with my mind. I had a very busy mind, a very clever mind. Um, So the, the first and foremost, it's all about getting the energy and I want you to imagine that it's almost like um, an elevator or a lift we call them lifts in Australia but an elevator where you're getting your energy and you're moving it from the mind from the head and moving it back down into your body okay so the process in fact why don't we just do it while we're here let's just do it everyone's listening so for those of you out there what I want you to do is I just want you to close down your eyes I want you to get comfortable in your space I want you to just take up energetic space for a moment, closing down those eyes, breathing in, just taking a few deep breaths. And I want you to notice that when you take those deep breaths, I want you to feel the the oxygen go in. And then I want you to sigh it out, especially for those generator types or a defined throat. Whatever noise comes out is really important. So sigh it out. 
That's it. And I just want you to notice your breath to start with. So you can feel that physical connection. And I want you to notice any sounds around you. And feel your bum on the seat or your hands in your lap, really bringing your awareness to this moment. What I want you to do is I just want you to feel into your aura. And for all of those thinkers out there, there is no way you can fuck this up, all right? So you just have to trust where your energy goes. Feel into your aura. I know for me, when I feel into my aura, it is this thing that is like massive and almost has like, I feel like it's like either like tentacles or it's just like this energy that's blowing in the wind and it's like receiving all of this, this information. So I want you to feel into your aura. And now what I want you to do is I just want you to body scan. I want you to start at, the um just probably a foot above your head and all you want to do is ask yourself what am i feeling and just let that gently move down through your body and you're curious about feeling And if your mind gets super busy, what am I feeling? Am I feeling it properly? Is that what I should be feeling? Is that should I, what am I feeling? What am I feeling? Just let it be there. Because everything is perfect. I want you to keep going all the way down. To the tip of your toes. And I want you to feel it's kind of like a loop and you come to loop back to the top again. And then just ask yourself again, what does my aura feel like? And now for me personally, when I feel, ask myself that question after doing the body scan, all my tentacles have all become like a clean aura, like a, a clean bubble. It's a lot calmer. And I feel like all my energy is my own. And then that's it. I really just breathe into it, come back into my physical body, open up my eyes. And then I have that awareness of my, like one of the things for me, as I say, like I'm really aware that I have this aura that has these beautiful tentacles and they are like, I love it a lot of the time, but often it's that awareness that like, oh, I literally have my energy tapped into so many different places. And when we just gently go through that process really simply, really easily, and we can make it longer, we can make it more challenging or, oh, sorry, more uh, complicated. But for me, simplicity is everything. Um, and it is asking yourself this question, like, what does it feel like in my aura? You know, like it, it's about your aura, body scan, then doing that loop. Like I always imagine that, you know, that energy force field that we have that is like that, that figure eight that runs through the, the, the chakras. So when we do that full loop and checking back into our aura, how that feels, um, this is up for me is like, okay, cool. This is it. And almost just the mental... Um, Funnily enough, I got a mental feeling. It was almost like a clicking into place of, okay, that's how my energy feels. And now we, and then we can go out into wherever we are and we can do that same process and we can do it faster. And just asking ourselves that question, how does my aura feel right now? Body scan, how does my aura feel, feel now? And you'll be able to start to differentiate your energy compared to other people's energy. Helpful? 
Yes, absolutely. I'm so excited to share this with various other mental projectors I have in my life. So thank you so much for that and this entire conversation and for being in my life. And yeah, I'd say, you know, when you were saying earlier that you are here to empower all of us, I would say yes. And you are rocking at it. And I just, I'm so grateful to, um, yeah, have found you in this lifetime and I just love it and everything that you do. So thank you. Oh, you're so, so welcome. Thank you. Um, I feel very grateful to have you in my life, in my class and here on the podcast. So thanks so much, Miel. Thank you. See you soon. So for all of you out there listening, thank you so much for joining the type, sorry, the authority series podcast. It's been so much fun talking authority in real life with people. Um, For those of you that are in the HDX membership, which is so exciting, (coughs) I just choked a moment, spit. We are just about to kick off the authority panels this month, starting with emotional authority. So we're going to be talking to an emotional manifester, MG, generator, and projector, which is going to be so much fun. So we can really see how they play out with each type. For those of you who um, are loving the podcast, we will have another series coming up very soon. So stay tuned. Um, But that's it for me today. Thanks everyone for listening and bye for now.